all a very good afternoon welcome to our fb live session and today we are going to discuss on an interesting topic which is the current pandemic that is going all around the world which is the covid 19 so here we are today gathered uh, for this fb live session to burst to burst all the myths that are going around on the corona virus so today we have with us dr sai pravin hasnat sir who is a consultant pulmonologist and critical care specialist at apollo hospital jubilee hills hyderabad sir is here to solve all our doubts about corona virus as well as the myths and facts about corona virus so welcome to our fb live thanks session. sarita thank you uh, i am going to burst some of them we don't know a lot about the corona virus still but we're going to do our best to get it or some of the myths that are out there about the corona virus i'm sure all of you are continuously reading and getting a phd in the corona virus with all these numerous whatsapp forwards etc but i think the simplest thing to think about is it's a virus it's actually a very weak virus it's got the lipid layer on it and it can easily be killed make sure you wash your hands don't touch your face use soap and water if you can alcohol based sanitizers also work but it's really critical that you make sure that you follow the government guidelines which have been instituted to maintain social distancing in this lockdown period it's really important that we avoid unnecessary contact especially out of the house because if the virus spreads it's going to be very difficult to control it and it's important that we measure as much as possible our ability to stay away from other people during this time thank you so much sir and as people know what is corona virus that where it has come from the symptoms and all but Give us a quick glance of all of that. Sure, I think the data we have so far suggests that it originated probably late last year in China. Then it has made its way around the world. The WHO has declared it as a pandemic, meaning it is there in almost every part of the world. And what happens is that people usually, once infected, may have no symptoms for a few days, but sometimes they end up with symptoms which may include a high fever, cough. They might have shortness of breath, and many of them sometimes even have uh, issues with. Uh, other non lung symptoms this may be as simple as not being able to smell for example or having an issue with diarrhea so we are finding out more and more as the days go on as you might have read in the media you know the virus has now affected europe especially italy and spain extensively and it is very sad it has also moved on to america and it is you know you know huge amount of patient care that is being required in the united states so all of that data is actually helping us in india understand what to expect at this point so the simplest way to put it is the virus has caused similar symptoms to other diseases which we get from viruses and in particular the upper respiratory symptoms and cough and shortness of breath seem to be fairly prominent so sir as we are going ahead and learning more about this coronavirus through various sources i know people might be getting all this information from different sources but please tell us and let our audience also know what are the uh, good sources from where they need sure. to believe in the content about sure see i think as a doctor we try to get the most accurate information uh, however we are also aware that there's a lot of public uh, apprehension about what the information is and where is it coming from see i personally use the world health organization site i use the centers for disease control site our own apollo hospitals websites actually host information forwarded from there in addition anything that's posted is verified before it's put on there's a technical website we often use called uptodate.com which also has a lot of very technical info uh, there are some uh, public media organizations which are also doing a pretty good job at putting accurate information but in general if you can rely on one or two sites you're going to get the most accurate info one of the best sites i have seen is our own government of india ministry of health and family welfare site which has an extensive amount of covid information ranging all the way from diagnosis treatment how to do quarantining and it has a lot of technical information that we as doctors are also using extensively thank you so much sir and as the information flow is happening too much so people are having a lot of questions also in the same way lots of myths and they are concluding themselves also believing in those myths so let's uh, discuss a few about them sir sure absolutely so the common one as the virus itself started from an animal which is still not confined whether it is a bat or snake or something like that but are there now again chances of we getting in contact with any live animals like the, uh, dogs or the pets or the chicken that we go and visit the poultry and all can we acquire the virus from these places now or sure. these pet animals sure so the, so far the data suggests that the coronavirus originated uh, from a possibly a bat 
then it moved up to another intermediate animal, then into human beings. It made this jump probably a few months ago. There are trillions of viruses, by the way, and all of these viruses are doing their own thing in terms of moving from one animal to another. But in particular, about the COVID-19, the ENCO virus, as they call it, th this one has actually not been seen to affect animals, other animals at all. So it would be very unlikely for you to pick it up from other animals at this point, especially domesticated pets. It's not going to happen. Poultry, of course, uh, you know, they have their own set of viral infections, but none of this seems to affect poultry at this time that we know of. And so we Indians have a myth uh, which is going around and as the summer is coming up, they all say that as the temperatures go high, the virus which is in the air or which is on the surfaces cannot sustain due to the heat that we have. Is that true? So this is actually an interesting point. There is significant data that a lot of viruses are seasonal. In fact, they are, uh, they, they vary with the season, you know, the, the common influenza virus is seasonal. However, some viruses are perennial, they happen all through the year and what we need to be definitely careful about is that the theory of the temperature is possibly true, but it's a very theoretical concern. We don't know enough about this virus to say this with certainty. Based on our experience with other viruses in the past, which include influenza and several other viruses, there is definitely the hope that higher temperatures may help decrease the spread. So there's a concept called infectiousness or contagiousness. That contagiousness might decrease with higher temperatures and change in humidity. Airflow patterns might make a difference. So honestly, we don't have all the information yet. The hope is that higher temperatures will help. It's also important to remember that contact among human beings, one being infected, one not infected, is the probably the most likely way to pick the virus up. Because, sir, why this question has become now a big rumor is the Saudi countries wherein the number is on high have high temperatures compared to India and the spread is now, uh, it's like going viral. Many people are getting in the, uh, contact with them. So that is why I think we Indians are now concerned that even high temperatures might not stop this virus. So coming to the other side of it, sir, can the humidity or the cold temperatures Will that increase the virus uh, transmission? So the, again, not enough data. Based on one or two papers which have come out, it looks like humidity plays a role. But what's more likely is that people are gathering closer together in a colder climate. Even in hot climates, people are in an air-conditioned environment. So that's actually another way that your temperature is not really hot there. So really the temperature theory is still being debated. But in general, it is possible that higher temperatures might actually decrease spread, but not proven completely yet. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, let's move on to the next question, sir. As nowadays we are coming to hear about the treatment options that have come up, saying that malarian uh, uh, virus infection medicines that are being given, I don't want to take the names of them. So uh, they are going to cure the uh, coronavirus is what is being understood by the common man. But there are even other things also, people without any prescription taking those tablets and, land, and they have landed up in serious trouble. So what exactly can we drive from this that are they going to help us or not? Sure. See, one of the first things to think about is don't panic. Uh, I don't think we should panic. Continue what you're doing. The rules might seem simple. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Wear a mask if you're sick. Those are the things which work. We know they work for certain. Everything else is secondary. Now, you mentioned the malaria. Now, by the way, it's a parasite. It's a protozoan, actually. It, it's not a virus. The mal malaria itself is treated by several medicines, and those medications have been shown to affect the virus's movement within cells, and there is some early data suggesting that people who have already infected with COVID-19 might have a faster or better recovery if they took those medicines. The government of India, along with WHO and other organizations, have put out a list of criteria of who is eligible to take those medicines. I would very strongly urge you not to take those medicines on your own without a prescription. In fact, it's not legal to take those medicines without a prescription. And what you should be doing is talking to your doctor. There are several online uh, COVID calculators out there which assess your risk. And you can figure out, are you actually having a risk for coronavirus disease? You can also go online and there are many ways to do a teleconsultation with your physician, especially in the lockdown. You can't go and visit a doctor. You can ask them about your risk for the coronavirus and using this calculator, your risk can be assessed. Once it's assessed, 
if you have certain key high risk factors, you might be recommended to take the medicine. However, most people do not need the medication to prevent coronavirus. We do not have information that this is the way to treat it. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, I'll be taking a few questions which the audience are asking us now. Sure. Does drinking water frequently help to prevent this virus? So if you're in a hot climate, obviously hydrate yourself. If you're exercising, hydrate, you know, hydrate yourself. Water in general, 70% of our body is water, by the way. So if you actually drink enough water, it's actually going to help you stay healthy. Your immune system depends on a balance of nutrients, good food, as well as water. So your immune system will be functional optimally if you are actually taking adequate water. There is no direct link between drinking more water and preventing the virus. There is no link between drinking hot water and preventing the virus. The virus does die in very high temperatures, 70 degree type you know, water pressure or in an you know, you know, area where they have 70 degrees, which is extremely hot. It's not something that we normally use at all. So moving on to the next question. Some of the cities are using air conditioning soon. Please advise it should be avoided or it should be done. See, air conditioning is relatively safe. I am more concerned about fungal infections coming from air conditioners. As a pulmonologist, we regularly see People have not cleaned the air conditioners. There is uh, other kinds of dust in it. People with dust allergies get dust problems from air conditioners. But the virus itself, as long as you have a closed circuit with a exterior fresh air coming in, as well as having a filter in place, which has been cleaned regularly, should not increase the risk of a viral infection. This, however, is an area that is being investigated actively. So what is the effect of UV rays on this coronavirus? So UV rays generally kill a lot of things and uh, it seems that the coronavirus might be sensitive. So, you know, you may or may not know this, but every day there are trillions of viruses floating down to earth from the atmosphere. And many of these viruses we don't even know names for. We probably know a tiny minuscule number of viruses. And a virus is really not a living thing. I see that look of surprise in your mind and face now. A virus is not a living thing. It's a piece of genes which are enclosed sometimes with a lipid, which is a fat layer, and it just goes around. It can live or multiply only if it gets in contact with a host, which is people like us, where it goes in and multiplies. And the nose, mouth, and eyes are the almost 90% of viruses get into our bodies that way. The coronavirus does not get into your skin, so it's unlikely that could happen. So I think just to remember, the virus itself is not a living thing. So, sir, there is one more question. If a person has common flu-like symptoms like runny nose or burning sensation in nose or eyes, how can he or she, she satisfy himself that he or she is not suffering from this pandemic? As hope for the best and prepare for the worst is best of Absolutely. So I know, I know all of you are obviously you know, in a lockdown and you're at home. It can be pretty frustrating, but you know, you're doing a service for everybody else and yourself by doing that. And one of the questions we have is, if you have a runny nose and a cold, do I have the coronavirus? We, we get calls every day now. In general, it appears that the most likely symptoms do include a fever, cough, shortness of breath. As I mentioned earlier, other symptoms are also being picked up as we have more and more people. Almost 700,000 plus people have had the virus in, in, in the last maybe a month or so totally. The latest numbers point to that. And if that number of people have it, you're going to get a variety of symptoms. As of now, it doesn't look like just having a runny nose is suggestive of the viral infection. However, we are finding out more. Especially if you have a viral infection or a runny nose, make sure you don't touch your face. Most of us, I don't know if you know this, but 23 times an hour we are touching our face. And we are actually you know, not even realizing we are doing it. It's a habit that we all have. So what I would suggest we do is to uh, make sure that you are not touching your face, especially when you have a cold. Wash your hands. Use a mask. Right now, short answer, just having a runny nose is not directly linked to having the coronavirus. However, if you have other symptoms, a travel history, you should contact your local government agency for verification on having the infection or not. You should also follow the quarantine rules that have been instituted around the country. Uh, a quick note here, sir, as many of them are having the small, small concerns and they want to consult the doctor. So, dear audience, our Apollo doctors are now on your phone. So that's very simple. So download Apollo 24 by 7 app on your mobiles and register yourself. And you can consult all our doctors across the city, across the India, everywhere. Because all of our specialty hospitals, all the doctors have enrolled themselves to serve you all online. Through mobile or through tele also. So you can avail that opportunity. So download the Apollo 24 by 7 app now. 
And sir, as was mentioning earlier about the quick COVID test, even we do have a small COVID test that is happening on the Apollo Hospital's website. We'll quickly upload the link on the same text box. So once the session is over, you all can take a self-assessment for this COVID-19 and see if you are at the risk. Yes, sir? So I think one of the things is uh, telemedicine has now been advised by the government of India as well as the Telemedicine Society of India to start using teleconsults to help take care of patients because right now in the lockdown period it's very difficult to manage even your chronic illness, diabetes, hypertension, etc. So it's important that you establish contact with your doctor wherever they are. There are several ways to do this. We have an app, for example, which I have used, but there are many other mediums also. You can try those out and do your best to connect with your doctor. Even a phone call is enough. So do your best to make sure that, one, if you have concern for COVID-19, talk to your doctor and sort it out. There are online calculators. Number three, please make sure that your family is safe. Make sure that you're, you know, they're advised that the old and the young should remain a little bit isolated so that way they're not directly infecting each other. Sir, we'll take the next question, sir. Uh, as we are saying about this alcohol-based uh, sanitizers and all, spraying alcohol or chlorine uh, all over the body, does this kill the virus? So spraying alcohol on the body is not advisable. Uh, you have to, you can use it to wash your hands and clean your hands, but alcohol does absorb to the skin, for example. So I would not spray that way. You can, you know, have a bath, use soap and water. Soap and water is extremely good to take care of this. So one moment. Can eating garlic help prevent the infection? And not only just garlic. I came to, I came across many videos, in fact, saying about taking ginger, pepper, and. Uh, good that is the Indian uh, uh, brown sugar or the good that we call bellum, uh, mixing of all of that into water, boiling it and cooling it down and consuming it daily also increases our immunity power and it will protect like a shield from coronavirus. Is that true? Honestly, I don't know. Uh, what I would recommend is there is a lot of indigenous medicines which may have effects which should be studied. Uh, Ayurveda has several compositions, for example, which may have an effect which we don't know about, which can be studied. So it's important that through the, for example, the government has the Ayush ministry, they are working and evaluating these. So that's something you can look at. In boosting your immunity is a good thing. Uh, using a multivitamin, uh, especially something with zinc in it, make sure you're not vitamin C deficient. So all of these help. But there is no good data suggesting that suddenly boosting these up to more than normally required limits is going to help you out in any way. At the same time, a healthy diet, exercise, and in this period where you're all isolated, communication helps. Make sure that you're talking to your family, to your friends. Make sure that the children in the family are not suddenly unduly worried about what's going on. Because for all of us, this is a very different time. Human history has probably never seen something like this before. It's important that we work through this together. Sir, as you were mentioning about the lockdown and the things, only means that the elder people and the children now are only the most affected people, not the middle age group. So again, the most of the data is from China. In that series, most people above 60 years of age are the ones who are most affected. But when I say most affect, let's not forget one thing. 80 plus percent of patients who have the coronavirus either have no symptoms or minimal symptoms or didn't even know they were sick. 20 percent end up needing medical attention out of whom only about 5% need to be in the ICU, of whom only less than 1% or 2% get very sick or don't make it. So the numbers are actually extremely low. It looks high because everything is happening right at once. As of now, I am not concerned that we are having a major spread in India. We have certain pockets of it which have been recognized, but I am not concerned that there is any major spread at this point. Sir, are antibiotics effective in preventing and treating this coronavirus? So antibiotics work against bacteria. Uh, they don't work against viruses. At the same time, people who get a viral infection sometimes get a secondary infection of bacteria for which the doctor will be able to decide if you need an antibacterial. So sir, uh, there are lots of disinfectant sprays and uh, everything coming up. Are they very much effective and will they give good results? So any kind of disinfectant to use as long as it's soap and water works very well. And then if you use an alcohol-based sanitizer with more than 60% alcohol, that will work. Soap works because it's a detergent. What it creates is this lipid that is fat covering the viral uh, genes inside. That breaks down any time it gets in touch with soap. And that's one of the ways it works. And of course, you have to rub it. You have to do it for 20 seconds and follow all the steps you've all seen the videos. So as people have a lot of myths saying that and thinking that these sprays, they need to be using it on their bodies, on their clothes, 
I don't think that is required. Only just washing the hands frequently and uh, avoiding touching of the face. Only these two, sir, or any other things also. So if you're so if you're in a public space or you're in a hospital setting, for example, and you have been exposed to the potential risk of being exposed to somebody with corona, then obviously you should change your clothes and maybe isolate and go into a quarantine if you have been exposed to somebody. For the general public, as long as you've not had any known exposure, follow basic hygiene principles should be adequate at this point of time. So, sir, as you were mentioning about the infection, so we Indians are tend to have a lot of allergy, the morning sickness, the runny nose and all. So, all those uh, people also, they need to be worried about and will there be any chances of they getting affected with this virus quickly? Not really. So your immune system is kind of never seen this before. If your immunity is down though, but if you're taking medicines that depress your immunity, the chances of picking up the virus are higher. And in that situation, it is important that you do your best to prevent yourself from getting exposed. Or you might want to talk to your doctor about adjusting your immune suppressive medicines. And there are some situations where you may need more advanced care in if you're actually very immunosuppressed. So there is another myth saying that hot or steam bath can uh, prevent the virus entering into our body, is that true? <laughs> Hot or steam baths feel good, I'm sure, but I'm not sure that's actually going to prevent you from getting the virus if you're exposed to it. And one more myth also, should I disinfect my groceries? That is a common question because people now are looking and finding out ways to move out of the house because they are being locked down. Right. So they want to come out and pick up groceries, but on the other side, they are more concerned about thinking that are they at risk? by touching those groceries and visiting the grocery store. Sure. So the same question applies to anything that comes into the house uh, from outside. So washing groceries with water is adequate like you usually do and in running water if you can would be adequate. You don't need to put alcohol on it. I mean many of us are probably learning cooking now sitting at home and not being able to get food delivered. So don't ruin your appetite by putting alcohol on it. That's not a good idea. Thank you so much sir. And one more question sir in the same way. So now that government keeping in view of our lockdown situation have started the takeaways, that is the Swiggy, the Zomato, the door delivery system, do you think is that safe? I think as long as you maintain what we call as a social distancing at all levels, you can do it safely. You could wipe down the container and also make sure that your hands are washed before you eat every time. And as we are talking about the food itself, so let me ask you the same question. Can we get coronavirus through food? Uh, unlikely, very unlikely, unless somebody coughed on it right away and was positive when you swallowed it right away. It's, you know, it's an unlikely scenario, but unlikely to that you will, food can cause coronavirus so infections. So you meant to say that whoever is cooking might be a chef in a restaurant or a mother or a man at home. They need, they should be following a certain precautions while they're cooking. Correct. Food safety is important, especially when you cook. You know, my hope is that with this new found hygiene measures we're instituting, Coughs are going to come down, colds are going to come down, diarrhea is going to come down, tuberculosis may get control. I'm just hoping that all these good things come out of the coronavirus epidemic where people start realizing the importance of good hand hygiene and covering your cough and not kind of, you know, coughing out unless you're having a mask in place or using your elbow to kind of cough. So, sir, as in many places, thermal scanners are playing a vital role in detecting the temperature. Is that the only way to rule out the basic thing or if a person has already COVID in him and without any symptoms and if he doesn't have any temperature, then how? So fever is a good sign that your body is reacting to something and it can be of many causes. Uh, and fever is a quick way to screen a population to see if they have any issues with uh, an infection going on. And for a public uh, purposes, using the thermal scanner may be useful to pick up people with obvious fevers. However, they're not the only way to pick up coronavirus infection. The other things we mentioned earlier about having other symptoms are also important to look at. So we are having a question here from an audience saying, why aren't a couple of pharmacies delivering medicines at home? They used to do that before and we want to take care of your usual monthly medicine. So um, I would say that, dear audience, that due to this lockdown and as government has restricted the number of employees also coming up at work. We at Apollo Hospitals, all of the staff members are coming up to the hospital daily and fighting towards this COVID along with you all. But the pharmacy staff, as they need to travel along and come to the pharmacy, we are trying to take out the new ways and see that the delivery system starts soon and even the, this pandemic also ends soon. So sorry sir for interrupting in between. So I'll take the next question sir. 
So how long does this virus stay alive on surfaces? So it depends on the surface. It might stay alive on steel, for example, for maybe even three days. Uh, on other surfaces like copper, maybe four hours. Uh, on plastic and wood, it's a different time frame. We're still learning more about the virus. It does stay on surfaces, but not as long as we thought. Metal surfaces probably longer. So it's important that you wipe down surfaces that you're in contact with, and which is why you need to wash your hands before anything touches your face, nose, or mouth. So you just told a little scary thing saying that on steel utensils it could stay for three days alive? It could. You'll have to verify that information, but I think it can. But as long as it's, uh, you, you have to kind of clean a utensil. So can we call that as the incubation period? Not really. An incubation period is very different. An incubation period is where a virus enters a system and you start having symptoms. And that can be variable between zero to five days. The studies are still coming out. It can be longer than that. But in general, within five days, most people have had some symptom or the other after infection with the coronavirus. So, sir, uh, many people are curing and, uh, and they are returning back home from the hospital, which is a good news. But uh, just to be on a safer side, are there any chances of recurrence? And do they need to take any care once they are recovered or they can just lead a normal life like others? So right now there are several people who have been cured of the coronavirus infection. They are, the proving that they are kind of actually cured, it comes through a negative test and it looks like uh, the negative test itself is needs to be repeated. And what we need to do is to make sure that the viral infection is uh, not there by the lack of symptoms as well as the lack of a, the test shows it's negative. The swab test is what we're using. There are some people using antibody tests which are not available yet uh, as far as I know. What we need to realize is that we are still learning about the virus. As of now, it looks like once you're cured, you're not getting reinfected yet, but we don't know all of it yet. So the prudent thing probably would be to continue to be in touch with your team, with your healthcare team, and ask them if any new information has come out. As of now, I would recommend somebody who's been cured to continue to maintain social distancing and possibly home quarantine for a good seven to 14 days more so that we are absolutely sure that there is no second infection that might occur. Thank you, sir. And uh, the isolation part, the self-quarantine for the people who have returned from foreign. So uh, the myth and the practice that is happening across in India, which I've seen in a couple of my friends and families, houses and the other ways around, is that they're not sticking themselves to a room, but they're wandering around in the house, doing the regular activities, everything inside the house, talking to people, exchanging utensils, clothes, everything, watching TV together. Is that safe? Self-quarantine means I, as per my knowledge, it is that they need to self-quarantine themselves in a room and do. Is that the safe practice or what is happening is that correct? No, I think you're right. You know, quarantine really means staying away from everything. So it doesn't matter that if you're in the house. If everybody in the house traveled, you know, that's a different story. If nobody has symptoms and you have a good timeline, the safest thing is for you to completely isolate yourself. But obviously, if somebody is not well, you need to ask for medical attention. If somebody has a need for somebody else to care for them, they can do that safely wearing a mask and perhaps a gown like how we would do in a hospital setting. But in addition, they will need to wash their hands and make sure that very closely watch for unnecessary contact to avoid all of that. So, sir, as you were mentioning about the, the self-quarantine methods and techniques, after 14 days, are there any chances of they getting the symptoms and landing up in COVID? So far, the data has not shown people being asymptomatic beyond 14 days. It might be a new infection, but from the data available so far, which again is somewhat limited, it does not appear that it will happen beyond 14 days. So, sir, uh, there is one more, like a discussion that is happening in the thing, saying that it is maximum 14 days, yet spread through asymptomatic carriers happen, and those asymptomatic carriers are not in the count. So, the real numbers of COVID-affected persons are more. What do you say about this? This is the discussion happening among the uh, comments that are happening. Absolutely. Right. So, this is a very common theme that's come out. So, I am able to rely on information put out by government authorities, uh, both in each country it's different. In India, as far as I know, at this point, there has not been any significant widespread community transmission, meaning that asymptomatic carriers who have been infected have not spread it randomly to random people who, they, who they've run in touch with. It is possible that it may be happening in other countries in a large scale, but because of what they have done and instituted aggressively in an early fashion of isolating, quarantining, identifying foreign returnees, as well as doing the lockdown, I think our social spread is much less. 
but we need to not let our guard down because if we let our guard down, the consequences are immense. It will be very difficult to handle the large number of the people who will get sick. It's important that we do our best to avoid that. Sir, only is it through dry cough that uh, COVID spreads because as we are talking about droplets of uh, to, that have come out through the cough and cold. But during dry cough, I don't think we will be seeing any droplets or the mucus coming out. No, they have done special photography. When somebody coughs, you will be shocked. Things fly out maybe 6 to 10 feet away within seconds, which is why we need to cover the cough. They have done uh, special uh, like, you know, slow motion photography and put some particles and you actually see the particles just shoot out. I mean, you, you will never get into a room with another person who is coughing after you see that because it is pretty real that these particles go out at very fast velocities and they are quite tiny too. So, the virus can, the virus is extremely small, the droplets are also small, but they can carry the virus very far. So, dry cough is also one of the symptoms. Correct. And it is not only dry cough, even the mucus or it can though we are having a wet cough or how do we Correct. So, if you have a mucusy cough or you have cough without phlegm coming out, you can still spread the virus. It can happen, yes. So, how do people differentiate? See, nowadays as it becomes scary, even though I am generally having a cough because I had an uh, I haven't consumed water since a long time and busy at my work. Suddenly, if I cough or uh, sneeze or something like that, so people are getting scary. One way is it is good that they are getting away from the infection. Right. But the other way is they sh they start saying that you have COVID. I guess go get it tested, which is on the other way putting down the uh, confidence levels and right. increasing so the stress. I think, yeah, I think so I think it's very very important we do not socially ostracize people whether they have COVID or not. You cannot discriminate. It's an infection. They didn't ask for it if they got it. It's like any other infection. It's important we actually support them. Do not do racial profiling. Do not do social isolation. So social distancing is not social isolation. You need to make sure that you continue to have your relationships with your friends and family and kind of maintain that. Do this at the workplace. Do this at home. This is something we can fight together. The COVID pandemic is a challenge for all of humanity. but. Fortunately, we have all the tools to fight it. We have advanced health systems. We have an excellent public health infrastructure. We have a government that has been extremely proactive around the world to try to catch the virus early and prevent its spread. We have several millions of people who are following the social distancing and lockdown isolation guidelines. We have doctors and nurses and associated staff doing their best to fight this. And I think we should work together. Stay positive. You need to make sure that you remember to stay positive. Because your mind affects your immunity. You may not know this, but when you're depressed, your immunity goes down. So please stay positive. We have every facet of COVID related care being taken off, care of by the private and the public. And there is an immense amount of work being done to make sure that we get through this together healthy. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And dear audience, we can see a couple of questions coming up repeatedly. All those have already been answered. So once the session is done, just wind up the session and you'll find your answers. So one more quick last question, sir. Uh, in a community-based house, because we live in an apartment-type building and all, so there is a common myth and understanding that the women, uh, housewives particularly, and the, even the working women, they say that as none of our family members or my apartment people have relatives or somebody they have visited foreign, so we all can talk to each other. Let our children play together. So, they are in that misconception and they are doing that practice regularly. Is that good? Honestly, social distancing is social distancing. Three to six feet distance between everybody. If we take shortcuts, we will fail. At this point of time, it is highly recommended that we follow the guidelines to the world. One person getting infected in a community can quickly spread it to other people. You do have things coming in and out of community, so it might spread through that manner also. So I think it's vital that we do our best to avoid the spread and follow the lockdown guidelines. Thank you so much, sir. A quick wind up before we wind up our session as well. Sure. What are the symptoms of COVID and when should we react to them and how, what are the preventive measures to it? Quick glance for our audience. Sure. So what we have, uh, you know, we've been obviously reading, we've seen a variety of patients who have symptoms which are very confusing. So the most likely is getting the history. Did they have exposure to somebody with COVID? Have they been within the country for the last two weeks? Do they have contact with somebody who was COVID positive? Or do they have contact with somebody who was COVID suspected and who is waiting for a test? 
If any of those is positive, then you have to really evaluate in a different light. If none of these are positive, then you can assess for symptoms, including a fever, which is high. You can also, it may not be very high, but some people just feel warm. That can also do that. You can have somebody with a cough. You can have shortness of breath. If any of these are progressing or not improving, or you have other unusual symptoms, which may be in any organ system, including, as I mentioned earlier, not able to smell or having diarrhea, these are also now coming up as possible uh, effects of COVID. If these occur, then you need to really get a test, but first talk to your doctor, use online calculators, use a remote consultation to ask if this is a possibility. You also want to make sure that if you already have diabetes, your sugar is under control. If you're hypertensive, make sure that your blood pressure is under control. Take this time to exercise. Perhaps learn a new hobby if you want, but don't ignore the rest of your mental health, your physical health, your spiritual health. It's important that we balance ourselves during this period, and COVID itself may go away in a few months, and it's important that these good practices we're learning now stick around. Thank you so much, sir. And dear audience, once again, I would like to bring it to your notice that Apollo Hospital has come up with a super initiative, self-test on mobile. You need not go out for testing for COVID. It is offering a quick self-assessment, which is driven by an AI technology, to know your current risk level for COVID. So we'll be shortly uploading the link on the content uh, comments box so that you can check your levels. And if at all you want to consult any doctor online, that is you can consult through video chat or through mobile, by downloading Apollo 24x7 app, you can search doctor specialty wise, your location wise, and you can quickly book a consultation at your convenient time. So that will save a lot of your concerns and solve a lot of your problems because as you are in the lockdown period. So thank you so much for joining us and enlightening us a lot of sure. facts about the COVID. And uh, dear audience, so as Sir was mentioning, please do take precautionary measures. Washing hands and avoiding touching of face is the one way to uh, avoid COVID and maintaining social, I would say not social, physical distancing. Absolutely. The physical distancing part is the main crucial role. Try and see that you have a physical distance of more than a meter so that you are at a safe zone. Thank you so much, sir. And thank, thank you. Thanks, Good luck.